Few things scare pilots more than the thought of a mid-air collision, and understandably so. Not only are they horrible to contemplate, they often seem like random events, completely beyond anyone's control. But they're not entirely beyond our control. Knowing how, when, and where to look for traffic, and understanding the limits of your ability to spot it can significantly reduce your risk of a collision. Statistically speaking, the risk of a mid-air is small. The United States sees an average of only 10 mid-airs per year. Those that do happen, however, tend to have certain things in common, namely locations and situations. There are places and times where the most aircraft share the least airspace, close to an airport, at low altitude, during the day. When these risk factors align, the chance of a mid-air increases. More than half of all collisions take place within five miles of an airport, and more than 95% occur within 3,000 feet of the surface during daylight hours. VORs are also common points of conflict. So are the fixes that define instrument approach procedures, particularly those in class echo airspace when the weather is VFR and aircraft are flying practice approaches. As the old saying goes, discretion is the better part of valor. If five other pilots have chosen the same time to practice your favorite instrument approach or do touch and goes at your home airport, it's often best to circle someplace nearby until things calm down a bit, or else just go someplace less crowded. The precise navigation offered by GPS and often augmented by capable modern autopilots is impressive, but it comes with a downside. Namely, that aircraft are more likely to be on exactly the same course and altitude than in the past. Nav and strobe lights make traffic easier to see at night, which is one of the reasons there are relatively few collisions after dark. Still, it's worth refreshing your memory of position light systems and how to interpret them. If you only see one position light, the traffic is crossing in front of you, from right to left if the light is red, and left to right if it's green. If you see the lights of another aircraft directly ahead, though, and they don't seem to be moving, there are only two possibilities. If the red light is on the right and the green to the left, it's coming directly at you. Sidestep to the right and turn on your landing light. If the green light is on the right or you see a white light, you're behind the other aircraft and going in the same direction, unless you know it's going faster than you are. A sidestep to the right is appropriate here, too. Back in primary training, we all learned the most basic technique for collision avoidance, see and avoid. But in the real world, see and avoid has limitations. Just ask anyone who struggled to spot traffic after being told exactly where to look by ATC. One of those limitations is that the eye does a much better job of detecting motion than picking up stationary objects off in the distance, which means that you're more likely to spot less dangerous crossing traffic than more dangerous converging traffic. In addition, the structure of the aircraft itself may prevent you from seeing the necessary directions. In almost half of mid-airs, one pilot has no chance to see the other aircraft because it's approaching from behind. Another 40% are side impacts, in fact, less than 15% of collisions are anything close to head-on. So, what's a pilot supposed to do? First of all, don't stop looking. The old idea of big sky, little airplane is only approximately true, and not watching for other aircraft won't improve your chances of seeing them. As much as practical, keep your eyes outside the cockpit and scanning, looking at small chunks of the sky at a time. Second, take full advantage of the other eyes available to you. ATC can be extremely helpful, but there are limitations here too, especially for VFR aircraft. At Class Bravo and Charlie airports, ATC uses radar to help sort out traffic, but at most Class Delta fields, the controllers are relying mostly on their eyes. Likewise, flight following is only provided when controller workload permits. So, while it's always a good idea to ask, Keep in mind that it's least likely to be available when the skies are the most crowded. Pilots often mistakenly assume that controllers are looking out for them anytime they're talking to ATC, 
But in visual conditions, whether VFR or IFR, pilots assume primary responsibility for maintaining a safe distance from other aircraft. ATC capabilities vary as well. Controllers at Class Delta fields are responsible for sequencing traffic on and off the runways, not for assuring separation. When they can't acquire traffic visually, they have to rely on position reports that may not be perfectly accurate. And regardless of the airport, remember that controllers are human too and sometimes make mistakes. Bottom line, don't get complacent just because you're talking to Tower. All things considered, the best way to avoid mid-air collisions is to take a two-pronged approach. One, do everything you can to make sure others see you. And two, assume that they don't. Rule one means making yourself more visible by turning on your lights when you're approaching an airport and entering the traffic pattern. Make position calls at 10 and 5 miles out when entering the pattern and during turns when the aircraft is most visible. Rule two is sort of like the old concept of defensive driving. For example, listening can be as critical as looking. Inbound to non-towered fields, check the AWOS and tune into the CTAF at least 15 miles out. Put together a mental picture of where the other traffic is and what runway's in use. That goes for towered fields as well. Mentally allow for the possibility that other pilots are either not talking or are giving inaccurate position reports. Focus your attention on listening and looking. And don't forget to check those blind spots once in a while. Finally, give yourself every possible advantage. Electronic traffic detection systems won't catch everything, but they do spot most traffic. They're increasingly inexpensive and can show traffic on devices you may already own, like smartphones and tablet computers. Properly ADSB equipped aircraft can detect all transponder equipped traffic while you're within range of a ground station. Pilots who've flown with ADSB in busy airspace report having been amazed at the amount of traffic they never would have seen on their own. Help from ATC is valuable too. As long as you're receiving radar services, whether under IFR or VFR, controllers will provide traffic advisories and safety alerts. But that's no cause for complacency. If you see conflicting traffic that's clearly going to be a problem, don't wait for vectors from ATC. It's better to take action while you've still got room to maneuver. And if you can't get flight following, monitoring the frequency can still provide some useful tips about other traffic in the area. Above all, Never forget that no one system is perfect. Panel mount avionics and portable equipment, ATC radar, and even your own overworked eyeballs can all miss other aircraft. The more of these you have working for you, the better. So remember, make yourself visible, provide good position reports, and listen early to build a mental picture of who's in that airspace. And knowing when and where the collision risk is concentrated, during the day, near an airport, and below 3,000 feet AGL, will keep you concentrating your attention where it's needed most.